Greetings, this is Artie from Artifact Electronics. Today we're going to do a diagnosis and repair, hopefully, of this board. Now this is a WPC pinball driver board and if you've watched some of my previous episodes you've seen me fix specific problems on boards of this kind, look just like it, but this one's kind of special. I got uh, this board and a few of its brothers from a friend of mine who repairs pinball machines for fun and profit, with the emphasis on fun actually. But uh, he has a pile, he had a pile of these boards, these driver boards, in, uh, in a box marked parts boards. And some of the boards had a piece of blue tape stuck across the big heatsink that kind of said what was wrong, what was ailing the board. This particular one, he didn't remember what was wrong with this, and there are no markings on it. So, in the first part, we're going to have to start our diagnosis and see if we can find anything that uh, makes us suspect that something is wrong on this. So for a brief tour of the board, what this does is it pretty much drives everything, lights, solenoids, uh, pretty much what, everything that's happening on the playfield is driven by this board. It is connected to the CPU board through this connector. So it doesn't have any smarts of its own, but it has, it's basically the muscle of the machine. You can see we have an array of connectors that pretty much connect to a harness that goes to the play field, the back box, to pretty much uh, everywhere in the pinball game. We have connectors for the transformer secondaries that uh, come in on this side. Everything uh, is rectified and filtered, as you can see, by the presence of the uh, large 15,000 millifar 15,000 microfarad caps and uh, the uh, large rectifiers of which we have one here, two, three, four and five are underneath a heatsink here and then we have loads and loads of uh, high current transistors some Darlington's over here for the really high load uh, solenoids it drives the uh, controlled lamps the general illumination flash lamps pretty much it's a power driver board. Lots of fuses on it. So really the power generation for the machine, the DC power generation, happens on this board. And there's quite a few things that can go wrong with it. It's mostly analog circuitry, but we can see there are some digital latches over here too that basically turn on and off things, hold the state of what needs to be on and off, and then turn the transistors on or off. And that's a brief overview of what's going on here. So I think we need to start with a visual inspection of the board and see what we can find. Now this isn't going to be a ground up repair of a machine that came into the shop and doesn't work, but rather we are going to take the bench repair approach to it. It's almost a bench repair and you'll see later on why I say almost, but uh, so we have a board, we suspect there's something, there's one or two things wrong with it, we don't know what, and uh, we'll just go through all of the steps of how to determine what goes on with this before blowing up any, anything else with it. So one of the first things we need to do is, we saw in the previous shot and over here in detail, there are lots of fuses on here. And I think one of the clues we may get is uh, let's measure all these fuses and see if they're all good and if not make a note of which one isn't and look it up in the schematics so we can get an idea of what could have caused that fuse to go bad now when measuring fuses don't measure the fuse itself because these fuse holders tend to get surface corrosion a lot. 
I mean, after all, this board is probably what? Oh, it's made in 94. So it's about 25 years old. And uh, sitting, we don't know what environment this was stored in. But I have seen cases where a fuse itself will measure good. But because of corrosion on the fuse clips, it actually is open. So the way we get around that is we actually measure the metal part of the clips rather than the fuse itself. That one's good. Yeah, it does look kind of funny, doesn't it? I thought it was a reflection from the heat sink here, but yep. So just to make sure, we'll measure the fuse itself. And yeah, that fuse is dead. That is fuse number F109. So let's make a note of that. And then basically continue doing the same thing for the whole board. As you can see, or did see, there's plenty more fuses on here. So I'll go through all of those. Ah, let's just do it live. I know how much you enjoy hearing the machine beep. Same way again, I'm measuring the clips themselves. That's because these are all, the reason I get continuity here is they're all tied to a common point. The tops of them are all wired together. They come from the same source. So, same thing over here. So yeah, basically this top part of this fuse block is not wired together because this is the AC input. So this things don't come from a common source over here. But measuring them individually. All right, so we got one bad fuse, F109. I just so happen to know that these fuses over here, F109, basically protects the, uh, we have uh, triacs over here that run the general illumination and allows us to dim the general illumination in eight steps. And uh, this fuse is gone. So either something on the, in the triac circuit shorted, or what I suspect is uh, the last machine that this was in had a fault in this general illumination chain that this was driving and that blew the fuse. But we shall find out. So really so far with testing that's the only thing we can find and the next thing we should do is to do some uh, visual inspection. This is the connector for the general for the general illumination. For those of you who don't know, general illumination are chains of lights that are all tied together that are basically illuminate the play field. There, the second type of illumination is uh, uh, controlled lights, where each bulb can be turned on and off to tell you what to do on the play field. But these just provide illumination on the sides of the play field uh, for general purpose. And there's quite a few lights. And, of course, it uses the triax so, so they can be dimmed. And when we look at this, we can see that this uses a black color connector. And what that means is that this is supposed to be a high current connector, rather than the white ones, the white ones here that are used for more, for other purposes that don't require, that don't pass as much current, but this guy passes a lot of current. Now, of course, looking at this, this has been reworked. 
uh, somebody has, uh, you know, scraped stuff off here. And what I suspect happens here is these things burn up really good, even though these are the high current ones. And when, when you let them cook for a while, they eventually fail. They burn up the connector that's plugged into them and you have to replace them. But because these things have cooked for such a long time, it's near impossible to get the solder out of the holes. And, the, and on top of that, the holes themselves get burnt. And uh, pretty much the through holes, the conductivity, as you pull these things out, you're pulling out, you're, you're generally left over with just the hole uh, where the pin goes in, you know, through the PCB material. And there's really no metal left here. And what we can see is one of the reasons why all of the mask was scraped off here. They're probably using this to test if there's continuity between them, the uh, conductor and the pin itself. Because usually things are so damaged underneath here that just soldering this thing in does not guarantee that you get a connection here. And uh, to observe that a little further, we're going to look on the back of the board. But uh, let's just continue with the top of the board for now. There's a few things I saw. The first one is this little cap over here. This actually sits at the output of the 5 volt regulator. Come on. Doesn't want to do it. Hello. This is a 100 microfarad that sits on the output of the regulated 5 volts. And again, if you saw one of my previous or some of my previous episodes, I fixed some soundboards which had very tinny sound. And it turned out that the soundboard had the same make capacitors. I think these are Philips capacitors, uh, electrolytics. And every single one of these caps was bad on the soundboards. What happened was, uh, like this one, I think the, the, the caps on the uh, soundboards were 10 microfarads and measured out a circuit they showed like a hundred picofarads so they were uh, definitely losing value which is kind of strange because more commonly what you'll find is that the capacitance goes up no that's not really true generally as they fail the capacitance goes down so uh, so without I haven't promised I haven't measured this thing yet but uh, I bet you this thing's gone bad and one of the things we're going to do is replace it. And then we'll measure it once we've taken it out to see if we were right. And other than that, on the top of the PCB, oh, let's see, where did it go? Right there. Don't know how well you can or can't see that. We may need a little more light. Like that. No. Yeah, kind of. So what happened over here, there's burn marks over here that extend all the way down here. And uh, this part is the odd man out, it's a different part. It has been replaced, probably along with the diode over here. And from the burn marks, there's also a little bit of burn mark on the uh, pin holder here for the header. This thing blew up. This is, drives the solenoids. And this most likely happens when a solenoid shorts completely. And basically, this thing's trying to drive it that short. And uh, before, before any of those fuses blow, it blows up, burns to smithereens, and damages the board. But anyway, this, this has been replaced, and we need to check it. But other than that, there really isn't anything else on top of the board that caught my attention. So let's go look underneath. And what we're going to do is we're going to start looking 
at this part, at this connector. So here's that black connector we looked at. Yes, it's definitely been uh, resoldered, and uh, and there's a lot of solder on here. And we can see that some of these pins are jumpered to the triax, which means that the pins in here did not make contact with the actual trace. Probably the trace itself was burned up right underneath the connector. And those traces we saw on the other side <clears throat> where the solder mask was scraped off are actually not going far enough to make contact here. So three of the triax over here were jumpered. The other thing we can see, and that's kind of interesting, we can see two jumper wires over here that go to what looks like one of the latches. And I have to look up exactly which signals these are, but these are the latches. The latches all wired in parallel. So there's several latches here but the input, they have a data input that is common to all of them and that's coming from this connector from the CPU board and it looks like some of the trace is going, actually two of the trace is going from here to the chips got interrupted somewhere along the line and uh, thus were jumpered. So one thing we should also do is measure continuity between these pins and uh, and the latches, the latch array over here, and see if any other ones, if any others are interrupted, and fix that right now, because obviously if the data doesn't get into the latches, all sorts of strange things are going to happen. So as I was oming out the data lines going to the latches, I saw some other unpleasantness that I missed. Right in the middle here, there's corrosion on all of these resistors over here. And here. There's no battery anywhere in sight. So where is that coming from? Well, your guess is, your guess is as good as mine, but it seems pretty obvious. This guy has started to leak the capacitor over here and affected all of these and worse than that I can't focus in more to really let's see if it'll let me yeah a little bit more can't really see it but on this chip the pins are corroded on this side and since these are all wired in parallel and some of these data lines are probably passing underneath the chip to join with these, the brakes may be underneath the chip. And if you remember the jumper wires on the back, they're basically jumpered from the connector over here, and they were directly jumpered to this chip. Well, what if those connections were jumpered to this side of the chip, and uh, which means this chip was uh, getting fed correctly, but then it never passed on the signal to the other chips because there may be corrosion damage under this one. So what we got to do <clears throat> is we need to remove this chip, we need to remove this cap, and we need to use some vinegar to see if we can clean up the corrosion on this. All right, I spent a good bit of time looking at the board, cleaning things up. I removed uh, this buffer, a 74LS374, and uh, actually the traces underneath look good, but where the traces pass between two pads, there's damage on this end. I cleaned it up as best as I could, but I can't get these pads shiny. There's just too much dirt in there. I would have to bathe the whole thing in a soapy solution and scrub it with a toothbrush and let it dry of course but uh, <clears throat> the problem is the relay over here I cannot submerge, submerge this and if I take this off in my experience you do a lot of damage to the board getting these thick 
uh, pins out. So essentially I used about one and a half gallons of uh, IPA, sprayed it all over the place, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of damage here. You can see these rows of resistors are corroded. I cannot clean them up. I scraped them a bit, but couldn't go too far. These actually were corroded, but cleaned up nicely over here. The other end is also corroded. This is where the capacitor sat. That has definitely leaked. And it also took the 12 volt regulator out here and did a bunch of damage to the uh, through holes. Again, I cleaned up everything, but just to give you an idea, if you look at the uh, regulator, what's left of it, the corrosion crept up all the way to the top of the tab on this. So, so this thing is most likely toast. The remains of the chip. The offending capacitor, which has definitely leaked. And uh, what else do I have? Oh, and that one capacitor, I guess, uh, that's sitting on the 5 volt line, that I guessed would be bad. Well, let's see if I was right about one thing at least. Click. This is supposed to be a 100 microfarad capacitor. Or at least that's what it was at one point in its life. And it's taking its own sweet time to tell us that. Come on, come on. That it has an ESR of 16 ohms and has dropped 52.86 microfarads. So, yeah, it's not super bad. But it's pretty bad. Remember, that's the one that sat on the 5 volt line. And uh, with that kind of an ESR, 16 ohms is a bit much. That's going to mess with the 5 volt line. So, so yeah, I was right. That, that one is bad. So what next? In my experience, things... I mean, there's probably hidden capacitor electrolyte in other places I couldn't find them but in short this board even if repaired will never be reliable because once you run current through it you know the electrolyte will travel as it did before and start attacking other parts but uh, I'm gonna try to fix it just to demonstrate how to do something like this and again, keep in mind, it's kind of a fool's errand because the, I would never put this board inside a pinball machine because at one point other things are going to fail and the solenoids are going to pull in and the machine's going to go up in flames. But it would probably be a good exercise to try to fix it. Put um, single and line sockets in here so we still have access and see what's going on underneath the chip. Putting a regulator, a new cap in here, and then basically ohming things out and wiring them. Uh, putting jumper wires on it so everything is connected. And see what happens. Okay, this took me some time, but uh, I put the socket strips in here. new cap in place of the uh, or originator of this problem. New 12 volt regulator here. Also replace this cap unrelated to this damage. Tried to clean up a little more. I mean I don't like the way these resistors look. 
at least this chip didn't get anything on it, but kind of afraid with this stuff still being here and uh, current flowing through it that it may start migrating over here. But anyway, we just want to see if we can get this thing to work. Now the other side of the board, I ohmed out everything and I had to put in a bunch of jumper wires that all went to that chip to the socket I put in here and I just went straight from the uh, header from the header that comes from the CPU and fixed all of the uh, non-existing connections and I, at this point I also or only checked the uh, the latch, the latching signal, the clock, the output enable, and the incoming data bits. And basically checked it across all of the latches to make sure what's coming in. I have not yet tested the, the outputs of the latches going to the transistors. It's because I'm kind of, I mean, I want to fix it, but I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of work till at least I get a, uh, I get to see that the 12 volts works and that nothing blows up when we start testing this. Another line that was necessary for the 12 volt regulator, but everything else is connected from the other side. So let's have a look at our test bench. And here's the test bench. 1994 Williams Pinball Flintstones, that is. I restored this and brought it back to life a few weeks ago. Didn't film any of it because it was pretty similar to the uh, Whitewater video I did and uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of new information. This thing, just like the Whitewater, was filthy. Half of the stuff, half of the toys on the playfield didn't work properly. It was in a very sorry state. Still got to do some cabinet cosmetics on it, but uh, but this thing works full blast. And, uh, well, almost full blast. It's got a few bump switches that are intermittent. But why am I using this as a test bench? The reason for that is uh, it's got a uh, it's got a transformer in it that supplies all of the secondary AC voltages required by the power driver board that it that the power driver board regulates to the required DC voltages and setting that up on a bench is, is kind of a pain so what I'm going to do is open this thing up take out the uh, existing driver board that works in it put the repaired one in there and then bring it up connector by connector and see if we can get this game to play. I mean, <clears throat> the uh, CPU board is in it. We're eventually going to use the same C hook up the same CPU board since there is no smarts in the driver board and see if the uh, repairs I did took. So let's go ahead and open up the machine and take out the existing board. Okay, I've removed the uh, board I mean the original, the working board that was in here, and uh, I've put in our repaired board. All I've hooked it up to is one of the uh, wires that brings in the transformer secondaries, and that should light up a few voltages and not blow any fuses, and uh, that's what we'll measure. So here goes nothing. Now remember, all, I'm, all that's hooked up is the transformer secondaries, all of this stuff, everything, even the CPU board, everything is disconnected. So even if things blow up, it should be localized to the board. Okay, that looks good. If we check voltages. That's the 18 volt rail. 
18.35. Then uh, the 20 volt, I don't think the 20 volt's connected. And no, it isn't. The 5 volt shows 4.95. Oh, and I forgot to insert this chip, but we're not testing that yet. And right next to it is the regulated 12 volts, or the digital 12 volts, which is this regulator that we just replaced. And that gives us 11.8988. So far, so good. So uh, let's go ahead and plug in the next plug that provides us with the remaining connections from the transformer secondary. Next we're going to plug in another set of uh, transformer secondaries. should give us 20 volts and 20 volts for the flash lamps and 50 volts well they list it as 50 volts it's the solenoid voltage but it actually the DC voltage on every machine I've seen is about the actual DC voltage is about 75 volts so I'm not sure why they list it as 50 but that's just the way it is so all we've really plugged in is the uh, is the uh, second uh, set of transformer secondaries and there should be more LEDs lighting up now ready go so actually the only uh, other L LED we got was a 20 volt LED the 50 volts doesn't have they didn't put an LED on there for the 50 volts, but if we measure the 20, we get 22. That's for the flash lamps. That is just fine. And then we should measure the 50. Where is the test point for the 50? It is hidden right here. And it's showing just as predicted it's showing close to 75 volts the only other thing remaining is the 12 volt unregulated that's this connector but we're going to plug that in and what we're also going to plug in is the CPU board and the display and see if the 5 volt supply on here is good enough to get the CPU board running. Okay, we plugged in the CPU board over here. It's data, and that's power to the CPU board. That should bring up the display, which is disconnected at this point. And it's also going to make the soundboard self-test and make a noise to inform us of the results of the self-test. So let's bring up the display panel. And see. Oh, and I also plugged in the unregulated 12 volt plug, so another LED is going to come on, but that's not consequential right now so here we go well that's not good Okay, let's try this again. 
and make sure that I didn't plug anything in badly. But that blinking LED you see, that's basically the CPU board saying everything's okay. Obviously not, but uh, let me check the wire. Let me check the plugs. Okay, I looked at the schematics, and it turns out there's another two connectors that I guess feed a certain voltage to the display that I had to plug in. So I plugged those in, and now. We got a display. All right. It's two o'clock in the morning. I think I've done my job for the day. So what we'll do is we'll stop here and I'll do a part two where well, we start testing the play fields and the play field and lamps and solenoids and all of that good stuff next time so thanks for watching please like and subscribe leave me a comment if you'd like and uh, we'll see you real soon with part two of the board repair I'm really interested if you think that it was worth doing it if it really if you would consider it a fool's errand or not, uh, so far it's making a liar out of me because I guess the stuff's working, but really the main issue was hooking up to the latches. Uh, that one latch that was corroded with all of the traces and stuff like that, and uh, it still remains to be seen if we can actually correct, uh, control stuff on the play field, if that's going to work or if our fix was for not. But stay tuned for the next episode. We'll see you then.